Well, good morning. Welcome everyone to our day one of the EdTech Institute. Uh, my name is John Long and I'm from the Department of Education Technology here at the School District of Palm, West Palm, of Palm Beach County. And we wanna welcome everybody to our first day of the Institute. We're so excited about this. We've been working on this for a long time and we wanna share a couple of information things before we get kicked off with our first speaker today. Uh, first of all, I wanna let you know that if you're new to our broadcast, you can subscribe and like down below uh, to our uh, YouTube channel and like our request and uh, so you'll enjoy more of these as we start kicking off the year. We already have a library of over 80 videos. Uh, we also wanna encourage you to tweet out do a, a selfie and show us that you're watching or what you're doing while you're watching or some ideas that you're getting from the Institute. You can tag uh, at EdTechPBC and use the hashtag for today, hashtag EdTechPBC as well, because that's where things are going to really happen. We want to see some workshop selfies of you in our workshop and our screen and see what what you're doing and join the conversation as we tweet throughout the day. We also want to let you know that over here on the right side is our chat and you can chat in our uh, chat window and uh, you may want to chat because guess what? We have door prizes and we're pulling people from the chat box. So right before we get the door prizes at the end of each session, you have to be chatting within 10 minutes and that makes you eligible for door prizes. And we'll tell you more about the door prizes at the end. I don't want to give all the stuff away. So hold on to that information about the door prizes. We've got moderators in the chat. And so you can access, uh, they will be able to answer your questions more directly because we're actually coming to you from the future. We're about 20 seconds in the future. And so we don't see your chats until after a while. And so sometimes there's a delayed response. So just a reminder that we're about 20 seconds. Sometimes it varies. Uh, we also want you to know that our sessions are going to be recorded and posted on our YouTube channel, but on our website, we will also have them on our uh, Institute website, which is at edtechtraining.palmbeachschools.org. And so we've got a lot of information to go to. So they'll be available on our um, Institute website, which is edtechtraining.pinebeachschools.org, and we'll share other resources as well as the recordings, uh, any handouts that the presenters want to share with you. We'll have all that. So we've got a busy first day. We've got six live streams going on today. Uh, first of all, I'm very excited to have Peter and Paul Renum from Fable Vision, but we have some other amazing speakers that we've had in the past, and some of those are new ones. And you'll want to be here for every one of them because I promise you they're going to be really awesome. And we're really excited about our closing speakers as well. So you don't want to miss any part of today. And then we also have a great lineup for tomorrow. So for our teachers in Palm Beach County, we want to let you know that you can earn professional development points. If you sign up in e-learning, uh, ELM, uh, this is for Palm Beach County teachers only, unfortunately, you can earn up to 10 points per day. So if you attend all of today uh, and you can earn up to 10 points. So the follow-up is going to be the teacher and student implementation, which is due by October 16th. And that's evidence for implementing two skills or strategies you learned in this institute. And also it's district mandated, uh, the survey, you need to complete that survey. One other thing is that at the end of each session, there'll be an attendance link for you to mark your attendance that you are here during this session. So it, it'll be at the very end of the session where you need to click that link and actually sign up for where that you're going to uh, your attendant and during this session. So I want to introduce our keynote speakers this morning. They're going to be talking about Create Bravely when the going gets tough, the creative get going. And we want to share out and see if what you say, I think you're talking about how creative you are in your classrooms and stuff like that. Peter uh, Reynolds is a uh, author and illustrator. He's a New York Times bestseller. And his brother, Paul, they're twins. 
And Paul is also an amazing author and he does some amazing things with, he teaches and they both teach and they work together. It's really cool. They've got a real cool term called twinning. And so it's uh, really cool. And they have some really cool things to share with us today. So I'm gonna turn it over to our keynote speakers and we'll be back a little bit later with some more information. So I'm gonna turn it over to the Reynolds. Uh, All right. Thank you, Paul. You may appreciate the introduction. I am Paul Reynolds, and I'm Peter Reynolds. He's my big brother. And we are really delighted to be with you up today. I think the technology is going to um, do the entire thing is gone and to, um, to, to a lot of the uh, Good evening, Peter and Paul. We're having a little bit uh, trouble hearing you guys. Um, oh, okay. Need a lot audio is going to need to be a little bit louder. Okay. Alrighty. So, so audio in terms of us uh, speaking louder. Or, <laughs> um, it's much better now. Yes. It is much better now. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Good. So, um, yeah. So sometimes technology works, and sometimes technology doesn't, which we probably all. Um, experience um, over the last few months with uh, video streams and zooms and meets and but um, but glad glad when it does work so um, so thank you to the entire team for you know supporting us on the technology side um, helping broadcast this um, and we're going to just jump in we have some slides to to share as well as some stories to tell. Yeah. And you know, hopefully, hopefully this time together um, in the morning um, will inspire you to uh, you know, keep, keep going and then mm -hmm. never stop. So. Yeah, and we are streaming from our, uh, our studios here in our hometown of Dedham, Massachusetts, not too far from Boston. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a, a great pleasure to connect the dots with all of you. And uh, of course, innovation is one of our, uh, it's the thing that drives us. We love innovating. We love uh, seeing if there are new ways to do things better. Um, and also do not forget the things that work, right? Even pre-technology, there were things that just, it just works. And so as we travel into the future, and by the way, we are 20 minutes into the future, right? No, 20, 20, seconds. Seconds. 20 seconds into the future. Right. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. um, and it's let let me tell you, it gets better uh, in the future. So um, the so as we move into the future, let's not forget the things that work. Um, and then there are the things that don't work. And though that actually that's great material for innovation, right? When you see a problem, uh, you have to think outside of the box and say, well, okay, that didn't work. Uh, do I give up on it? No, which of course, that's one of the biggest lessons we have to teach our students. Don't give up, don't just move on. Hang out with the problem, solve it, turn it upside down, turn it inside out, uh, get help from other people, find mentors, and just stay with it. Don't give up, keep pushing forward, and you will have your breakthrough. So I know that all of you have had, uh, well, you started out the year, and it was a normal year. and. Come end of February, the world started to tip upside down. And by, by mid-March, I think most of the country was uh, tipped upside down, as was your profession. Everything you were doing that worked, that you knew worked, suddenly was tipped upside down. And you guys were teaching you know, from, your, uh, from your living rooms, some, some of you in your pajamas, uh, and you had your class scattered, and you had to... It wasn't as easy as double clicking and connecting with them all. You have to find them, they have to find you. There were a lot of challenges to overcome. And uh, of course, one of our favorite things is when the going gets tough, the creative get going. So you guys have been innovating on the fly and you have so much to share with the world and with us. And we're hungry to hear your experiences. So this keynote is only what, um, a short period of time, right. but let's stay connected and we wanna hear from you. What what worked these past uh, few months? And also what didn't work, right? What was the frustrating part? 
And by the way, I think that some of you, um, some of you probably are disposed probably more to innovating uh, because you know how to wing it. And, um, and some of you maybe feel more comfortable with the scaffolding, the script. Um, but we had to go off script this time. Yeah. And so I could right. call. That's well, yeah, and the, you know, I also teach at the university level and I've been teaching at Boston College for um, uh, over 20 years. And the 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 my my world changed as it did for all of you. And within days, um, we I realized that I, I wouldn't see my students again. And there was an emotional burden as well, because I think all teachers, um, most teachers that I know know that. So much of what we do is because we love we love our students, and that uh, being in person um, and watching the nonverbal, the eyebrow raise, the the extra few seconds of silence, you know, as as somebody's leaving the classroom, you pick up those cues. It's so difficult to do in virtual space, and I, I had to scramble. And I've been doing blended learning for years, and that's what I did my graduate studies in. So I was. You know, I thought, oh, this, I'm, I'm prepared for this. And I actually, I wasn't fully prepared. And it was, you know, it was really emotionally um, hard for me as it was for, for my kids. And I think, you know, we as a department just said, first and foremost, it, it's the emotional well-being of our students that matters most. And we have to make sure that they, they transition to a place where they, they feel um, um, some, some order restored um, mm -hmm. Or just the comfort level of feeling that they're you're being supported. Yeah, I, I, I think you you hit the nail on the head. The, the most important thing is for your kids to still feel that you love them. Mm -hmm. And what ways can we show our love through distance learning, right? It's, it's not getting them through their math homework mm -hmm. or uh, uh, learning 100 new vocabulary words, all very mm -hmm. cool and useful but the most important thing is that emotional connection what did you do to make your students know mm -hmm. that you miss them that you love them and sometimes we get so busy we kind of forget that one because it's kind of you know people refer to that as sort of a soft skill mm -hmm. um, but I think it's probably the most important uh, attribute of a great teacher is that they they love their kids they show it they're not afraid of it in fact some of you go uh, overboard showing how much you love your kids. I've, I've seen, I, I was moved to tears with some of the things the teachers did, uh, the lengths they, they went to make sure that their kids knew that they were loved. So that to me is one of our most important tools in our toolbox as parents and educators, anybody that cares about kids. Right. So as a practical note, uh, the you know, our focus on, on creativity is, um, uh, presupposes the notion that that creativity actually can be learned and that's sort of we have to put that out front and I think most of you know that that it's not a gift that you're given some people are given creativity and others aren't it is actually a it's um, learned attributes that we can get we can work on it and get better so all of you um, can be creative and you are creative and you can even be more creative mm -hmm. but the thing that we've noticed um, you know through our practice through the years is that it, um, you can say be creative, but it also requires a lot of courage. And that's why we, we use the, um, the, the phrase create bravely a lot. And I'm wearing, I'm wearing the t-shirt um, and Peter created this little graphic um, because it's, mm -hmm. it turns out courage is a huge piece of this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> right. So you, you guys have to go off script this past couple of months. And, you know, some of, some of you probably felt more comfortable doing it. Um, than others. Um, some of you are uh, what well, we call you gentle rebels, right? You, you're the ones that even when things are, you know, normal, um, you're still, uh, you're, you're speaking in the good stuff into classrooms and testing it out, even though it's not been absolutely, you know, not approved and stamped by, uh, you know, by state, uh, the state curriculum police, you guys are uh, winging it. And, and you're saying that jokingly. Okay. I'm saying yes. that jokingly, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah. but you know what I'm saying that yeah. that um, uh, you know you do have to. Think, you know, innovation requires that you think outside of the box. It is encouraged in uh, you know in uh, design, in um, 
in entertainment, um, in art. There are so many fields that innovation is actually, uh, in fact, companies have R&D departments, right? Their, their whole job is to pick up new ways to do things. And I think that's probably, if, if, I, would, uh, if I was president, I could uh, allocate money to R&D and allow teachers more freedom to, uh, to innovate and, and not find the one size fits all solution, but find, uh, find innovations that it might only help that one kid in your class. Mm -hmm. right. Right. But that's an innovation because you can also, if there's one kid who's struggling in that, uh, in that way, there are probably thousands of kids or tens of thousands mm -hmm. of kids across the, actually around the planet right. that could benefit from that. Um, I saw a little girl who was struggling drawing. She was a first grader and uh, she would not let me see her work. She was so terrified. And I went up to her. She had thrown her body on top of her artwork. And I said, what's the matter? And she said, uh, she just looked at me. She said, I just can't draw. And that broke my heart. And I'm thinking, okay, uh, I'm going to do something about that. Now, for me, the tool of choice is story. So I created a story called The Dot. Uh, about a teacher who thinks differently in more ways than one and inspires Bashti uh, to make her mark. And it unleashes this amazing wave of creativity. And I knew in my heart that, yes, there was this one little girl in my class who was struggling with her confidence to create. And I thought to myself, well, if there's one little girl, there's probably tens of thousands of little boys and girls and then my other thought was that there were a lot of adults that also never got that message and they put their pencil down maybe in third and fourth grade and that part of their brain started to shut down. So okay. our work is all about inspiring um, uh, innovation, especially in classrooms, because we know, mm -hmm. especially in, in light of the recent, you know, what's been happening in our country, the only way we're gonna fix this the only way that things are going to get better is to innovate. We cannot keep rinse, you know, we call it rinse and repeat. You can't do the same thing, maybe just 3% differently. Sometimes it takes doing it 180 degrees different. So, um, so story, so story is important. Like the, the dot as Pete, Pete was mentioning, and we're actually going to maybe do a little reading of the dot. Um, mm -hmm. so we're going to just tell a little bit about our story. I think a lot of, a lot of people know our backstory, but mm -hmm. um, you know that there we're twins, or as we say, you know, we started as roommates. Um, my mother was surprised to have twins. We were born the day after her birthday on March 15th, much to her surprise. Um, and that's us in Toronto. So we are Canadian um, by birth. And uh, that's us in the incubator uh, with the doctor. And we grew up together, five kids in the family, a great family, but definitely the, the twin bond um, was a very powerful one. And I think John was, John was referencing to it. The, the term we use is twinergy. Um, you, there's a certain energy that you get when you can find your twin. And if you don't have a twin, we highly recommend you getting one because it's, it's terrific fun. And if you can't find, you know, your biological twin, find your twin-ish. Um, it's uh, when you're being creative, having your your critical friend, somebody who's critical to you, and also knows how to help provide some feedback in a way mm -hmm. that doesn't, you know, burst burst your bubble, um, mm -hmm. but you know keeps keeps you going. Yeah, is really important. So find your twin in your practice, and and make sure that you're hanging out with them because amazing things can happen. Things have happened because we've hung out together. Uh, Peter and I write the Sydney and Simon uh, steam powered adventures of Sydney and Simon. Twin twin mice. We get to we mm -hmm. our twins, <laughs> twin twinness yeah. in there. Um, fraternal twins in this case, right? Fraternal twins in this <clears throat> case. And Sydney and Simon love problems, and they use their STEM and their uh, creativity skills to solve the problems in town. So. Um, and then, of course, there's going places that we did together, which I think we're going to touch on later on in the chat. And people probably know Peter from the Judy Moody series and the Stink series, which um, is continuing on. Yes, Megan McDonald has kept me busy for, actually, it's been 20 years since we started the series. And I just received the next Judy Moody 
in my studio and get back and uh, uh, dive into that. So right. it continues. And of course, there, there are the um, new ones. The new yes. books, right? The Word Collector, which um, Michelle and Barack Obama just read last year. If you haven't seen the reading, um, check it out. Chicago Public Library live stream um, on May 8th mm -hmm. and or 14th, something like that. Mid middle of May. Um, so that was pretty pretty cool about Jerome, a little boy who loves to collect words. Um, and I Am Human, a book of empathy. Very important book right now. Um, and Say Something, also another really important book mm -hmm. at this, this point. And, um, and of course, the new, the new book, Be You, which and is, that, that's a handbook for amazing human beings. I wanted to explore the idea that the, we're called human beings for a reason, right? We, we, we can be so many things, and I wanted to help kids explore all the cool things they can be. They can be curious, uh, they can be connected, uh, they can be kind, they can be listeners, um, but that being yourself, being true to yourself is probably the hardest thing. And then in order to do that, you are going to have to be persistent. And um, I, it's, I'm, in the book, I'm trying to encourage uh, my readers, young and old, um, to stick with it and keep exploring who they are and um, be more, to be more you, right, every day. And of course, there's the dot, the dot book, um, which uh, that was probably taken 17 years ago, many years before my 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 <laughs> silver beard. Right. And uh, I have a nine-year-old son. This is why why my hair is uh, why I'm more silver than Paul. <laughs> um, but yeah, the dot the dot came out 17 years ago, and um, I actually I fell asleep with my pen in hand in. On my journal, and when I woke up, I I had there was this big dot on the page, and that inspired me to create the book, the dot. Uh, and again, it was um, the the goal of the book was to encourage uh, all ages to uh, to be brave enough to make their mark, and then stick stick with it and explore that idea of what whatever you're passionate about, whether it's motorcycles or rockets to uh, to space. Stay with the thing that you love, explore it deeply, mm -hmm. and then also share your your passion with other people. Even if it's not to turn them on to you know uh, space flight, but it might be just to show them what it looks like to be passionate about something. Which is what, as teachers, let your kids know how awesome, how fired you are, fired up you are to be a teacher, because you're looking probably in your classroom, you're probably looking at a few future teachers. Mm -hmm. So the power of story, we, you know, it goes back to the, our little mantra of uh, create bravely. Um, how, how do we get people to be braver, our kids to, and, and us as, as teachers to go into places, especially right now where we've left our comfort zone in so many ways, um, that bravery piece is probably more, more relevant than ever. And for us, we know that in our practice, story is a huge piece of what we do to help um, help people on their journey from to, to becoming their best version of themselves. And it, and luckily the power of story, you know, can get us there mm -hmm. um, in ways that other things can't. So I think maybe just a little story time read. Um, sure. Right. The, the dot. All right. The dot. Funny. <laughs> I wrote and illustrated this book. I have to tell the kids that they, right. they asked me afterwards. Um, our class was over, but Vashti sat glued to her chair. Her paper was empty, as was the classroom. I always ask kids, where do you, where do you think all the other kids are? Well, in my imagination, they're probably out at recess having a, a grand time. And uh, but Vashti, for some reason, is staying in the classroom all by herself. Vashti's teacher leaned over the blank paper. Ah, a polar bear in a snowstorm, she said. Very funny, said Bhakti. I just can't draw. Her teacher smiled. Just, just make a mark and see where it takes you. Bhakti grabbed the marker. She gave the paper a good, strong jab there. Her teacher picked up the paper and studied it carefully. Hmm. She pushed the paper toward Bhakti and quietly said, 
Now, sign it. Vashti thought for a moment, well, maybe I can't draw, but I can sign my name. B A S H T I. The next week, when Vashti walked into art class, she was surprised to see what was hanging above her teacher's desk. It was a little dot she had drawn. Her dot, all framed in swirly gold. Hmm. I can make a better dot than that. She opened her never-before-used set of watercolors and set to work. Vashti painted and painted a yellow dot, a green dot, a red dot, a blue dot. The blue mixed with the yellow. She discovered that she could, she could make a green dot. Vashti kept experimenting. Lots of little dots in many colors. I love that word, experimenting. A lot of times people think experimenting is a science word but it's an art word, a creativity word. If I can make little dots, I could make big dots too. Dusty splashed her colors with a bigger brush on bigger paper to make even bigger dots. Dusty even made a dot by not painting a dot. At the school art show a few weeks later, Dusty's many dots made quite a splash and you can see a little boy in the middle of the script scene and he's all excited. He's like, oh my gosh, look over there. It's Vashti, the dot artist. She's actually here in the gallery. Vashti noticed the little boy gazing up at her. You're a really great artist. Hmm, I wish I could draw, he said. I bet you can, said Vashti. <laughs> Me? No, not me. I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. Vashti smiled. She handed the boy a blank sheet of paper. Show me. The boy's pencil shook as he drew his line. Vashti stared at the boy's squiggle. And then she said, please, sign it. And I love I loved his expression. Right? This page is my favorite because... He's, he's like, what, who, M me, me, sign it? Like an artist, like an artist, like an artist. And that's his moment, that's his transformation. He went from uh, feeling no confidence mm -hmm. to being halfway. And then suddenly he got that, that, that rush of, yeah, I am, you know, I am an artist. In the same way when you're working with kids and you're trying to inspire them to read, right? They, 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 in the beginning, they're struggling and there's something you do, something you say, just the right book. Mm -hmm. And suddenly they, they go, they, they step through the looking glass and they are a reader mm -hmm. uh, or they, under, they understand a math concept. And, and teachers have that ability to believe in you before you believe in yourself. And I think that that's, that's when you see that spark Mm -hmm. um, that's innovation. That is vision, right? Being able to see something that does not yet exist. Right. Um, and that's what you, when you look out at that sea of kids, whether it's online or in front of you in, in a, a, a brick and mortar classroom, uh, you are seeing, you're visioning uh, their future. Mm -hmm. And you're, and in fact, I'm sure some of you, you could probably see the clues. Some kids uh, transmit clues uh, better than other kids. And of course, that's our job is to. Uh, get kids to transmit their, the clues about who they are. Uh, but some some kids, you kind of know right away, you're like, oh my gosh, this, this kid's going to Broadway or this kid is going to be uh, building, uh, you know, building the next rocket ship mm -hmm. uh, to Mars. Yeah. Um, so so that we put the dedication in the presentation because it's, it's important. And actually, you'll find the dedication yeah. at the back of the book. Mm -hmm. Dedicated to Mr. Manson, my seventh grade math teacher who dared me to make my mark. He was one of the uh, few teachers. I mean, of course, this is in the 70s, which actually was kind of an innovative era, sure. the yeah. late 60s, 70s. Um, and um, I love to draw. My math teacher noticed that I was drawing. And, of course, most teachers were thought that I wasn't paying attention. Mr. Manson noticed, noticed that I was drawing, and he challenged me um, to uh, 
teach? He, he pulled me to one side after class and said, Peter, um, how would you like to teach math using your art and your storytelling? And I was so excited. I'm like, yeah, sign me up. That sounds good. Um, and so I went home. I made a comic book to teach math. Went in. I showed it to him. And he could have patted me on the head and said, good job. But he he said, um, do you know what you've done? And I'm like, well, I made a comic book. And he had the wisdom to say, well, it's also called a storyboard. And it's what a filmmaker uses to plan out a film. How would you like uh, to make an animated film of your story? And at this this point, I, I think I burst into flame. I was so excited. I'm like, what? <laughs> Am I, I'm in a math class. I, he asked me to draw, to write, um, storyboard, and then create a film, which is what we did. And he found the teacher from the high school who was the media teacher, uh, probably would have been the technology uh, teacher these days. And the those, those two helped me make my very first animated film at age 12. Uh, and uh, that's what I do today. And I, we actually have a company that uh, Paul and I founded called Fable Vision. We're celebrating, I think, 22 years now? 23. Oh, 23 sure. years. <laughs> and we use media, storytelling, and technology right, to teach and move the world to a better place. Not much different than what my teacher, uh, age 12, um, my teacher challenged me to use my creativity to teach and to mm -hmm. um, to enlighten other people. So that is the mission of our company. And we are located in Boston. If you ever come to Boston, uh, there's Boston Harbor. That's our view from our window. And we are actually co-located at the Boston Children's Museum. Do you see that yellow elevator on the side of the building? Um, that's actually part of our studio. Um, that's the lounge area of our studio. Um, used to be an elevator. Well, actually, there is an elevator in there, too. But um, that is, we are on the top floor of the Boston Children's Museum. And when we can all travel again, we, we, we do know that that moment will happen at some point. Um, it would be fun to see to see some of you come and visit us. We love to have teachers drop in to see the studio because I, I, I love the studio because it is a, um, it's, it's a learning studio as well as a creative studio because we're constantly learning and it's, we, we mix everybody up, artists mm -hmm. and animators and coders. And um, the, the 21st century skills is, is, is like the perfect illustration of communication, collaboration, critical thinking, creativity. So we invite you to, we invite you to come up if you're coming to a conference in Boston, um, God willing. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, I, I came up with the name Table Vision for my for our studio 23 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought to myself, what's a good name for, for this uh, studio that I had this, you know, vision for the, and I thought, well, I love fables, right? Te fables are teaching stories. So using story to teach. And I think all of you out there probably share our passion that story is probably still one of the best technologies for sharing big ideas, um, sharing information, sharing inspiration. So I thought, okay, fable, and then vision, as we were saying, right? Being able to see something that does not yet exist. Mm. And so, a good way to come up with the name of a studio, take two words you love and stick them together. Mm -hmm. In fact, I would love all of you who are listening to name your studio, right? You have a learning studio. We also call it a classroom, right? Mm -hmm. But you have a learning studio and it deserves a really cool name. We so, would love, send us your names. We would love that. Yeah. If you, you, you could just send, send text us or, or email us. Uh, mm -hmm. We're on we're on social media a lot. So at yeah. Fable Paul and at Peter H. Reynolds. Um, send us your studio name, and if you're so so moved to draw it, animate it, sculpt it, um, mm -hmm. send us your creative interpretation. And we animated. You can see our logo being animated here. Right. Um, of course, I still love animation. I love animation so much. I actually created an, an, uh, a a tool to animate. We're going to talk about that in a short minute. Yeah. And this is the studio, so you'll come up to see uh, see us. It's a working studio, um, digital digital. This is. Uh, Jordan, one of our digital um, musicians, composers. Anna is a digital artist, animator. Uh, we work with awesome companies, primarily nonprofits who are dedicated to moving the world to a better place. And they come to us and say, we have this really complicated idea. And can you make it simple, mm -hmm. simpler and easier and more accessible uh, to understand? These, these guys are definitely kindred spirits. If you look at some of Fred Rogers, Make-A-Wish, right. uh, Boys and Girls Club, Girl Scouts, Right. Aquariums, hospitals, um, all groups who are working uh, to make 
the world a better place. And they, all of these people understand that learning happens uh, everywhere, right? right? It's happening all the time, everywhere. Yes, in schools, but also on the way home from school and at home and at the museum and even in the gift shop, right? I always say that gift, gift shops are one of the best assessment tools because if you really, really love the Monet exhibit, you're probably going to end up with with the book and the postcard and the poster on your wall, right? Yeah. yeah. I call grad, uh, Fable Vision Graduate School for Life because whenever any of these uh, partners come to us and say, can you explain how a volcano works? We actually all have to figure out how a volcano works. And then it's all the facets of understanding. We, we end up having to um, study, research, synthesize, mm -hmm. and express it in a way that makes sense. And if it doesn't make sense, our, our partners, subject matter experts will tell us. So, um, so the that idea of like we 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 have fun every day because we're we're animating and and, and publishing, and so the, it, so that's the studio side. On the table, visual learning is our K twelve uh, programs and services uh, side of the the company where we create creativity and maker tools to help kids and teachers um, do what we do essentially and really turn turn your classroom into mm -hmm. into a media studio. Yeah, it was kind of fun for me, you know, because we have a program called Animation-ish, and uh, I had been teaching animation to teachers, and it, it, I was using some the, the tools that I had available, and they were pretty complicated, and I thought um, I wanted to uh, make something that anyone could use. So I created Animation-ish, and then I, I thought it was kind of cool that my math teacher uh, dared me to make my mark, and then said, okay, now animate it, and... Uh, and, and then I grew up to to help other people do the same thing um, using technology. So if you get a chance, animation-ish, level one especially, is super easy. You guys could uh, knock out. A, a, right. Actually, we know John Long is a huge fan. Oh, he's, right. a, he, and yes. he's, a, he's an expert at mm -hmm. been using it for, I don't know, 10 years? At least, um, yeah. So so we are the maker tools that we have, um, are we are constructionists. Um, pedagogically, we believe you know kids learn by making things, and uh, you know, Fab Maker Fab Maker Studio is their digital design and fabrication software, great for STEM and, and STEAM programs. Um, and Get Published is our publishing program that actually features Peter is a you know, online storybook academy where you teach kids over thirty one modules um, how to yes um, I, I how to write stories I have revealed all my secrets. Yeah. I have revealed them to the next generation. Actually, you can also uh, partake. There are a lot of people who I probably get at least one, uh, sometimes two or three letters a day saying, how do I get published? You know, I have an idea. Um, I, I just need to know the next step. So I, I created this uh, academy um, in Get Published. And uh, no matter what age you are, I, I'll take you through the process from coming up with the idea, uh, developing it, uh, polishing it up, getting it ready for showtime, right? For the, to share with the world, and then also uh, promoting it, right? You have to let right. the world know that you created something amazing, and right. you have to uh, find your audience and also take care of them too. Right. And uh, just as a note, all of these are web based. Um, we we've been doing this for a long time, so you know, from the days when they were you know, CD ROMs and then um, and laser disc and laser disc <laughs> and desktop applications. And now they're, now they're web-based. So we're excited about that because in a world where where we may not be physically together um, when we're teaching a, a blended, this is a perfect blended learning tool. So if you're with kids um, and animating or publishing or doing visual design fabrication, um, that's awesome. But they can also pull their project down from the cloud, hang out at the library and do it, hang out at home if we're required to stay home. So it's a, it's a really good um, blended learning um, tool, and as we like to say, right, right. Most people get jobs. If you're lucky, you get a dream job, right? Do what you love, and love what you do. And, and I know that uh, sometimes people spin that wheel in, you know, high school. And they're like, oh, what college am I going to go to? And then to get to college, you have to spin the wheel again. And um, it, it, I wish we had. I wish kid, young people had more time to really delve into what. What's the thing that really sparks them and brings them joy? Not just what you're good at doing or what your parents think that you would be good at doing um, and uh, or what pays what pays better. Um, 
And uh, so, you know, discovering what that job is that really isn't a job, right? Because if, if you love what you do, it really isn't work, right? And, and I think for, for those, you know, if you, if you have a spark that if being more creative and applying your creativity seems like it would be a dreamy job, uh, we do have to remind everybody, including adults, because you could pick this up at any time and just get better at it. Creativity is actually learned. Uh, the more you do it, the better the, the better you become. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, you don't want to put your pencil down like Ramon does in the book. Yes, you have to keep going. Right. So, right. and it, it is about it's about you know it's about being brave, right? Creating creating bravely and not giving up. And people say, oh well, you know, it's it's easy for you to say be creative, but it's really really hard. And how do you you know how do you get you know where's the inspiration come from? How can you change somebody who feels stuck? And that's story for us. There are probably a lot of different ways, but for us, story is a key key way mm -hmm. to do that, whether it's you know a book like The Dot or Going Places or Ish. Um, and the only thing better than a story is an activated story. And we love you, our teachers, because you guys know how to activate the stories. We can write them, we can animate them, um, we can create tools around them, but you are the ones that are actually activating it on the front line mm -hmm. um, together, um, remotely. Right. Um, but um, there are teachers like Terry Shea in Iowa mm -hmm. um, who read the book The Dot with his kids. Right. And they noticed the publication date was September 15th, 2003. So they asked, Mr. Shea, is that the birthday of the book? And he said, well, why don't we ask the author? And when I heard that, I'm like, you know, the release date, yeah, it really is kind of the birthday of the book. Mm -hmm. And so we, uh, they decided to have a little party, a birthday party for the book. Uh, it, he shared that on Facebook and then mm -hmm. 40 teachers joined the next year and then right. then thousands of teachers the next and And it just and it was called Dot Day. Originally Dot Day. Yes. And then once it started spreading, by 2011, um, it was clear it had jumped the gates into the international world. And so it officially became um, International Dot Day. Um, and there, it is, it's such a joy for us. It's September 15th-ish, so on or around September 15th, the beginning of the year. Some, some schools we know celebrate starting in August. Mm -hmm. Some schools go all the way through October, November, but around September, I, I am pretty delirious because it's it's just so fun to see all these images of how teachers and students are creatively interpreting that challenge to make your mark mm -hmm. and see where it takes you. And to what we love is the idea that people get it that you know it's not just creativity for creativity's sake, but creativity to move the world to a better place. How can you use your creativity to make a positive difference in the world? Um, that's me in China with some some dot fans, um, and I love this little boy sign. Um, Happy International Dot Day! Don't be afraid of dreaming. Mm. You know, that's that's great, bravely. Don't be afraid. So it's interesting how universal that that is. So pretty cool because of one teacher in a classroom in a little R and D lab uh, created this thing that has reached um, as of today somewhere over sixteen, you know, almost seventeen million teachers, librarians, and students in 185 countries. So if you want to sign up, I think, I'm pretty sure, I know, we have lots of um, we have lots of teachers out in the audience who are already celebrating. Dante, if you haven't, just go to the dotclub.org. Everything's mm -hmm. free. That's part of our nonprofit, the Reynolds Center for Teaching, Learning, and Creativity, Reynolds TLC. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you have all the tools there, including a digital guide that help you inspire your students and yourselves to create bravely. Um, we're going to kind of zip through just this another another example of story, you know, a practical way to um, to uh, bring bring the, the the key 21st century skills um, into your classroom through the power of story. A uh, partnership for 21st century um, skills in or now 21st century learning in Washington D.C. approached us, and they said they after 10 years of work framed out the 21st century skills framework, which had seven, 18, 18 digital skills. And they decided what, what of those 18 essential skills for 
uh, thriving in the 21st century are the most important, three or four, and they came up with the four C's, and I'm sure most of you know these at this point, but um, it's communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and our favorite one made the list, creativity. Yeah, yeah. so excited about that one. And um, yeah, that, that was, it was great to know that, it, you know, 180 organizations all voted for, for these skills and with creativity making the list. Uh, Peter and I sneak in one more. Um, it's unofficial, but we add one more. And, and that's the fifth C, which is compassion. Right. Because all those things, you can be, you can be very creative and do a lot of critical thinking and do some, do some harm in this world. So, um, you know, compassion. Every one of the books um, in our shared collection are, mm -hmm. um, you know, have an element of compassion, kindness in them. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if this is going to work or not, um, but we have a short animated film. And it's just four minutes. This is our this is our entertainment break. It was a warm spring day down at the Main Street schoolyard. Excitement was in the air. Hey, check this out, said Charlie. The school's going places contest has been announced. Come on, let's go get our kits. And so the kits were handed out. Everyone identical. Everyone with a set of precise instructions. Each student set off to work. Charlie knew how to follow directions. He made great progress and was quite proud of his work. Meanwhile, Maya was taking her time. She watched the world around her, noticing other ways things go places. The next morning, Charlie was finished and carefully inspected his work. But a noise interrupted his thoughts. Wow, said Charlie. What is that? You didn't follow the directions, did you? I started to, said Maya. But I wanted to try something different. Uh, Maya, what does that have to do with a go-kart? Asked Charlie. Who said it has to be a go-kart? Hmm. Suddenly, my project doesn't look very exciting. <laughs> oh, but you're a great builder, said Maya. Hey, maybe we should work together. And so they did. First, they compared notes. Charlie was good at details. Maya good at dreaming up ideas. Each had a different approach to getting things done. Then they got to work. Side by side, they helped one another to build something new, something inspired, something spectacular. The next morning, everyone gathered for the final challenge, the big race. Each student stood alongside his or her finished project, each cart a perfect replica. Well, almost perfect. Ready? asked Charlie. Ready as I'll ever be, said Maya. Some of the other students weren't so convinced. Ha! Huh. You may think you're going places, but you're just going to lose. Students, start your engines. On your mark. Get set. Charlie shouted, Maya, you're all ahead of us. What are we waiting for? No worries, said Maya. Flaps down, throttle up. What? Whoa. Did you see that? And we have our winner. Charlie, my efforts. We did it. We finished, said Charlie. Finished? I don't think so. We've only just begun. Right. Flaps down, rattle up. And off they went. They really were going places. They were going above and beyond. All righty, 
and there we go. So that was our entertainment break. Uh, hopefully you're sipping your, your, your coffee, your tea, and enjoying that. The, the film is available. So it's called Above and Beyond. Um, and was, oh, and you put the URL down. I did put the URL down. Yeah. Uh, and it is, uh, it's kind of fun because we, Simon and Schuster saw the film and picked it up as a book. And so uh, it's slightly confusing for people because the animated film is called Above and Beyond and the book is called Going Places. And the kids love to compare and contrast the two because they're, they are slightly different. But it, essentially the same themes of um, trying to encouraging all learners to you know, think outside the kit. And it, it's fine to follow instructions, it's fine to follow directions, um, but innovation and invention happens um, outside, off when you go off script. It's mm -hmm. good to know the base, base um, foundation mm -hmm. knowledge, but, but I think it's also important to know that, that learning is, uh, certainly can be done solo, um, but learning is also collaborative. That you can learn with another person. Um, I, you know, like when I'm doing a puzzle, uh, uh, I love having my son Henry because he's very scientific and mathematic, and he's so much better at noticing the patterns, and he helps me out a lot. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, in art, you know, remind people that art is not a solo sport as well, right? Art is a, can be a collaborative uh, sport, mm -hmm. and um, so may, you know, I hope that. Um, inspires you to think differently about right. art. A lot of a lot of the um, a lot of dedications that are, that, in our books are are to our teachers. Mm -hmm. um, this this going places was dedicated to Dan Leclerc, our tenth grade social studies teacher, who dared us to have original ideas, and and to all great thinkers who have got above and beyond, above and beyond, which would be our audience, our well, audience, right? because they're all great thinkers, and they've gone above and beyond, especially yeah. in these tough. Tough times, right? Yeah. Um, so the um, the you know it, it's a joy for us to see our how our stories are embraced in, in classrooms with creative educators. Uh, we we know that we only have creative educators in our audience, um, and the creative educators who are okay with um, with connecting the dots and and as you say, you know, winging it. Is that that's a that's a skill? Mm -hmm. um, here's a classroom in Denmark that, that uh, actually translated the books into Danish, which is pretty cool. When mm -hmm. you say collaboration, this is when we write a story. It's the beginning of a collaboration with you and your students. And and if you're doing something with the books or the films, let us know because it um, number one it gives us great joy to get the messages, and it also is innovation transfer because in a connected universe like we're connected today, powerful ideas can sweep across that network in ways that are unprecedented on, in human history. So, mm -hmm. you know, all of the work that you're doing in your our creative R&D labs is important to us because we also can amplify it across our networks, which is kind of cool, that especially with Dot Day, it, yeah. it now includes 185 countries, which, yeah. So. I, I created this um, at the beginning of this uh, crisis that we were in, um, and uh, of course, it's a little riff on uh, a, uh, a little poem by a Scottish poet, and of course, I'm going to forget his name right now. Um, but the, the best laid plans of mice and men often go astray, and I added this. But keep the faith and don't give up. Good things will come your way. And again, that's, that's persistence. Mm -hmm. um, and if we can teach our kids anything it's uh, that we can overcome whatever obstacles get thrown in front of us mm -hmm. and uh, you know that's going to require new thinking um we will be inspired by whether it's for trump and mice <laughs> um sydney and simon both believe when the going gets tough they're going to get going and uh, and the blank book we're ending off on the blank book because right. um it is we're coming in for a here <laughs> yeah and the, we love the blank book. And we actually, we looked around in our hometown, we did not have a bookstore. So we opened up a bookstore and it's called um, The Blue Bunny. And one of the most popular books, because I rave about this book, I show kids when they come in and grownups too. And I'm like, you want to see my favorite book of all time? And I tell them Charlie and the Chocolate Factories was my 
the book that I loved growing up as a kid, but this one has taken over as my favorite book. And I show the kids what is inside, and I'm like, check this out, this cool double page spread, and this is how it ends. And of course the kids are like, but there's nothing in there. And I just sit, stick with it. And I'm like, wow, oh, it's so awesome, I love this book. And, and they're looking like I have two heads, and I say, why, why do you think I love this book so much? And then they, that begins really one of the best conversations ever. And they're like, oh, you, you, you could put your drawings in, you could put your writing in, you could put your ideas in. And then eventually they'll say, someone will say, well, it, it could be anything. And I'm like, bingo, right? It could be anything. And to see a blank page and to get excited and say, it is to be anything. This could be anything. That's creative thinking, right? And that's where we want our kids to be. To look at that blank page, instead of being terrified by it, look at it like it was a the most uh, refreshing pool on a hot summer day. You can't wait to get in. So if you're a little bit nervous, I would say, right, climb into the, the shallow end and then wade out to the deep end. Mm -hmm. But the, this water is the water is fine. Jump jump on in. Right. Uh, dive into the blank page. And in fact, uh, this next fall uh, is filled with blank pages because we don't know what's coming, right? right. And it may be a, a, certainly a modified plan of what normal mm -hmm. was. It will definitely be normal-ish. It will be classroom-ish. And it will be filled with blank pages. And the cool thing is we, you as innovators, you guys can imagine the possibilities on right. these blank pages, right. right? Every day you wake up in the fall, you right. will be, uh, you'll have another blank page right. to fill. And it's, a, it's about inspiring creativity in your kids, but also in your own own practice. And when we talk about creativity, we, we like to use a few adjectives just to underscore the, the nuanced version of creativity that we're, we're after. Um, and that's positive, purposeful creativity. And that frame is, we think, really, really important, especially right now. Yeah. Positive, purposeful creativity. Right. And we, we just want to say that we're, um, you know, we're here for you through, through our books, through the animated films, mm -hmm. um, ReynoldsTLC.org or Fable Vision Learning. We also do professional de development. I know we've, we've been doing professional development in Florida. Um, in particular, we've, we've, we finally committed over the years to develop courses that uh, are specifically around learning the attributes of creativity and how you can get better at creativity. And we travel, well, we used to travel and hopefully we'll travel again, um, you know, as we've, you know, all across the United States. Uh, last year we went to Guam um, and I, I, my guess is we might even have some folks in Guam watching. Mm -hmm. um, and that, um, so we, we, want, we want to hang out with you, whether it's through the power of technology mm -hmm. um, in a blended, um, environment or um, in person, hopefully, you yeah. know, sooner rather than later. And we, we developed a creativity certification course. So if you if you want to uh, actually become sort of yeah. yeah, how cool is that, right? Um, uh, so I, and remember, we're everything we're talking about certainly will benefit your your kids, your students. But remember that we're also talking about you, right? Take care of your creative batteries. Uh, our not-for-profit is called Reynolds Center TLC, right? Teaching, learning, and creativity, but it's also, right, tender, love, and care. Make sure that you take care of yourself. Yeah. Make sure that you take care of your own creativity because the best way to inspire our kids to be creative is to show them what it looks like. So, you know, take out the, uh, the paint, take out your uh, camera, take out, uh, make a film, um, yeah, knit something, uh, build something, right. um, show kids, right, to create, make something. And it might be, if you guys are really good cooks, why not create a cookbook and show your kids uh, what the ingredients are? Yeah. Um, there's so many ways to show right. how incredibly creative you are. So we are wishing you an amazing right. creative journey. And I think we, we've, we're at prize time, it's 9.30, which means we, it's time out for us. And I think we swing it back over to the team um, in the broadcast studio. Um, thank you so much to everybody for inviting us in yes. um, and yeah. connecting the dots with you and um we're giving i know one of the prizes is, is from you us uh -huh. um and we're going to throw in some extra cool cool things so we'll we'll let you guys have it in the studio now so thank you very much thanks everybody
Wow. Thank you so much, Peter and Paul. That was so inspirational. If you uh, rewatch this and see all of the great comments that were going on in the chat, you're just, uh, you inspired so many teachers today. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you all. You're right. It is prize time. So we're going to drop you guys down. I'm going to pull you right back up before we leave uh, for final yeah. comments. Okay. Perfect. All right. Let me get on the right slide for prizes. That would be helpful. <laughs> All right, everybody, it is door prize time. Um, you have to have participated in the chat at least once in the last 10 minutes in order for our lovely bot to pull your name as a winner. Um, we have lots of great prizes throughout the Institute. We're going to have prizes at every session. But because this is our opening session, we have four prizes for you today. Um, so we're going to go ahead and draw that first prize. And again, I'm coming to you from the future about 20 seconds in advance. So they're going to go ahead and um, in the chat, pull the first prize winner. And the first prize winner is going to get uh, one of Peter and Paul's signed books and also an original watercolor illustration. So our first prize winner is actually getting two amazing prizes. Um, our amazing presenter is Peter and Paul's signed book and the original watercolor illustration. So good luck to all our participants. Um, again, you have to be present to win. And we can only ship to uh, the USA. So um, if we have anyone visiting from outside the USA, I'm sorry, but we can only ship inside the USA. So I'm hoping our first prize winner has uh, been announced. We're going to go ahead and jump into our second prize. So you guys can go ahead and pick the second prize winner. And today, that second prize winner is going to win a swag basket from Lock and Charge. So that will be quite fun to go through and find out all the cool swag that Lock and Charge has for you. Um, if you're not familiar with Lock and Charge, they're a great company that um, provides places to keep your devices safe and to um, have them all charged up and ready to go. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to our third prize. And the third prize, let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see these prizes. Our third prize, go ahead and draw that winner. The third prize winner is going to get Dewey the document camera stand with a microscope and light. And this is donated from CamCore. Um, would this have been so awesome for you to have when you were teaching from home? I know a lot of us were trying to figure out ways to create our own document cameras with our phones and with our iPads. So having this stand would just be an amazing thing to have at our homes. Um, Again, um, one, two, three, we have three. We have one more to go before I announce the next winner. I just want everyone to know who is a prize winner that you must email Dana Rubenstein at palmbeachschools.org by Friday in order to claim your prize. And you can also only win once during the Institute. All right, we're going to go ahead and pull our last prize. And our last prize today uh, for this session, not for today, is a Chromebook. And this was uh, donated to us from Reading Plus. So our fourth prize winner today will receive a Chromebook. All right, one, two, three, four. I'm hoping that that's happening in the chat. Um, we should have some winners while we're waiting for all of those winners to be announced in the chat. Um, let's talk about attendance. So if you are uh, signed into ELM and you want to earn some points, please go to bit.ly slash ETI attend one that is case sensitive to sign in for the attendance for this session. Um, you do have to uh, sign in in order to receive uh, credit and ELM. Um, I believe our moderators will put this link in the chat for you but please make sure you have attendance. And at the end of every session will be an attendance form. And I uh, just want to thank you all from the entire uh, EdTech training team and also from the entire EdTech uh, Educational Technology Department. We thank you so much for joining us on our institute. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, please tweet out your experiences today. There was so much creativity and inspiration in the first session. Uh, tag EdTechPBC. We can't wait to hear your thoughts about today. Coming up next, we have a session with Tanya Averth, who will be joining us from Adobe. Oh, excuse me, wrong one. 
Um, and you can get to that by bit.ly at ETI Tanya, or you can also go to our website uh, and click on the EdTech Institute page and every session for today and tomorrow is linked out there. So I'm gonna bring Peter and Paul up one more time to uh, say goodbye. And I thank you so much for joining us today. And here we are. Great, thank you, Rebecca. Um, really appreciate you hosting the show. And we know, you know, John Long and John Shoemaker um, in, in part of the studio team. Thank you to them because they did a lot of the prep work um, with us. So thanks, thanks mm -hmm. to them. Yeah, I want to do a little shout out to Michelle Dunlap, uh, who participated today. I saw she was tweeting, tweeting out, and I spotted this. Uh, she says, my learning studio name would be Dunlap Destinations Books. And she even has a tagline, books take me places, which I love. Yeah. And she's moving from the classroom to the media center um, next year. So, uh, uh, Michelle, yeah. So that was fast work. Yeah, love yeah. love it. And I hope, uh, hope our audience uh, has an amazing summer and a stellar fall and next year. And remember, we're we are friends on the journey. So good luck, everybody. Take care. Great. Right. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. We'll see you at the next next session at ten o'clock. Thank Very you. Good.